Albert Cron here with my old buddy Tony Gemignani. How's it going, Tony? Good, Albert. Good to see you, man. Good always, to see you. always good to see you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, exhausting show, a hard show. Yeah. Um, you did a couple of big demos, um, and you know, I want to talk to you. What I thought was the most amazing thing was your three hour for men do. Oh, thank you. Three hours. Dude. Yeah, well, three or four. You know, we did a four hour for men here, but when I was doing it at uh, my restaurant. Uh, it was warmer when we were uh, fermenting at Room Ferment, so it actually got done in about three hours and 20 minutes. Yeah, it's a flour by Etal Mill. I went to a laboratory in their flour mill um, a few years ago, brought a team, heard this guy Tiziano and Oksana were doing this flour. It was a short fermentation, and I saw a couple of pictures of this crumb structure that was just, it looked like a 72-hour rise. So went there, worked in their lab for two days in Bergamo, Italy. Uh, learned it. Uh, the process was a little similar to what a lot of us know about bulk fermentation, but what's in the flour, the enzymes and the sourdough, um, the way how much biga goes into it, uh, that's really what's different. So it's the flour, it's the Italian milk flour. Wow, wow. And we did two we did a black rice flour and a classic. So if, if you looked at it, there was some that had a purple structure. So you looked at it, you're like, what, what the heck's purple about it? Yeah, it's that black yeah. rice flour, that's, uh, that it, and it's delicious. It's, it's light, crispy, airy, and it blows away any 72-hour fermentation <laughs> dough that you've yeah. ever seen. So, yeah. so black rice flour. Black rice flour, and they have a classic. I personally, what I do is I blend them both. So what I like to do is they, they do a biga, a pretty heavy biga that goes into it. I like to do that uh, with the classic, and then I like to do the rest of my flour using the black rice. So I blend it. They say they don't blend. They like to do one or the other. I think it's better blended. Right. Yeah. Right. So for everybody, what is a biga? Can you explain that? A biga is a type of a pre-ferment. You hear the words poolish and biga. It's a low hydrated, almost 55% to 60% water to flour weight, which is 100%, so it's almost half. So if I were to make one, let's say, and you uh, you did a one pound of flour to almost a slightly over a half a pound of water with a little bit of yeast, uh, you let that ferment for about 14, 16, or 18 hours, and then uh, use that pre-ferment in your dough to create flavor, structure, to make your dough more aromatic, so yeah. Right, right. You know, actually, I've been seeing you all over on TV. Uh, <laughs> one of the most recent ones was on Bar Rescue. Yeah. When you went into a, is it actually a brewery? It's a brewery, yeah. Here in Las Vegas? Yeah, yeah. And so I went into a brewery with John Taffer. Uh, they had this Mara Forney in the front. It was a tiny one, actually, uh, a 90, uh, so it's, it's kind of considered a smaller one. You know, they are using bad tomatoes, they're using terrible cheese. I mean, it was uh, a lot of things that you didn't see a lot that we did. We made a dough there that was made with their, their beer that they brew. It was an awesome dough. I blended it with caputo and a high gluten flour. It was, it was really awesome. They actually didn't show that on the episode. Uh, so we did the dough, we changed our cheese, we did slices, uh, which you didn't see much of, like on that show. But you know, editing, you know, when it comes to TV, yeah, they, you only they, see a they little really bit. Editing that down. I mean, yeah, because it's, like, it's a lot about the booze and the, uh, you know, the the consumer and the the, the, the employees and right. stuff. Right. It so, wasn't yeah. Pizza Rescue with Bar. Rescue. Yeah, so, yeah. So, so it was a good show. I love working with Bar Rescue. I've been on since uh, almost the beginning of that show. Oh no, kidding! You've yeah. been in a lot of different. Oh yeah, episodes, yeah, so I didn't yeah. Some cool. The other ones. thing. About a year ago, which you were on What's My Line, which uh, I thought was fantastic. Uh, to tell the truth, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, to tell yeah, the truth. What's My Line the, goes way, way back. Way back. Just don't want right. to say it. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm just to tell the truth. It was I To Tell the Truth, with, uh, which was funny. I've been on two shows like that over the years, so they kind of look at you. Uh, there was another one um, that was on, and I was that, at that time I was a pizza acrobat. And the guys are looking at me, and you know, and it's funny. Yeah, they yeah. couldn't figure out who I was. Only yeah. one, yeah. Yeah. So it's a cool show. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So but you got some new things going on. You got Dago Bagel. Yeah, I what opened up a new. Is that? So I opened up a sourdough bread bakery in San Francisco called Toscano Brothers. Uh, inside that, I opened up another concept called Dago Bagel. Um, I put the Dago in every bagel, I guess, is yeah. that what it is? Yeah. <laughs> now, it actually goes back to uh, an issue I had in San Francisco with a guy that was trying to shut me down and uh, kind of figure out why he was trying to call, shut me down during COVID. Yeah. Mad because we had a lot of people in front, mad because there was Uber drivers, I had the city uh, coming by, 
and people were like, yeah, everyone kept on coming. Why, why is everyone so worried about my business, you know? Finally, we get into a confrontation. He says, y'all, you effing dagos are like, you come here, you good for nothing, you freaking oh, wops. You think you're a tough guy? Why don't you come around this building? Show me how tough guy, you freaking dago. You're nothing but a freak. I'm like, all right. First, the guy's 70 years old, maybe, yeah. you guys. Yeah. An older, fragile man, you know. I could have punched his lights out. <laughs> I said, just move along, get the hell out of here was working on this bagel concept at the time in the bread bakery. Um, kind of came back to the kitchen and said, you know what, F that guy, I'm gonna call it Dago Bagel. Sure. Screw him, every time he sees that logo, every time he sees it, he's yeah. gonna be pissed because that Dago maybe made something of himself. Yeah, that's funny. So he, uh, that's why that came out, from that Never weird confrontation. <laughs> yep, Here that's what go. he used to have said. There you go. So there was a little bit of, confrontation with that it created a lot of buzz it went national um, it was uh, you know people are like wow what are gonna people think about that um, you know what it is what it is so yeah I, I take finish, the main back all right, take the I word back finish up with you I really thanks for your sure. time your book still doing well well I sold out at the show you know what's great show. about this show is you know how many new operators come or at least I do by how many books I sell and how many morning seminars I get and the question is, how many people have made dough before? Commercially, yep. Yep. you get like six out of 100. Interesting, so wow. when I see that, and we sell out of books, uh, all newbies, people are getting into the pizza business. COVID was good for the pizza industry. A lot of guys reopen unless you had a big restaurant, lots of seats, or you're a fine dining pizza. But if you were 100 seats or under, to go on delivery, I mean, it, it kind of did really extremely well, unless it was really bad yeah, in your area. Right. So other areas of business didn't do so well. Guys are looking into pizza business right now to get get in. I had a lot of, I had I had a guy come to me and say, I got a 5,000 square foot restaurant, over 100 seats, never been in the business before, never made a pizza before. We're opening in a couple of weeks. What what should you do? What should you tell me? And what did you say to him? Why don't you go work in a pizzeria <laughs> first before you open one? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Sometimes they're passion projects. I don't know if people really get into it. It's a scary business, you know. It's a hard business to get into. You know, you don't want to detour someone from getting into the business, but the percentage is so high of failure. You just want them to understand it. Don't sign a lease. Don't sign a personal guarantee where you're going to lose your house. Don't get a second mortgage on it. Don't use your life savings. Be cautious, come to Pete's Expo, learn a little bit, and take baby steps before you jump sure. into the, you know, sure. into the marathon. <laughs> you wrote the forward to a, a, a book that just is coming out pretty yeah. soon. I wrote the forward to Modernist Pizza that's coming out. I was pretty excited to be asked to do that. Um, I've been working with them on that book uh, on and off for years. Francisco came to the school a couple times, got certified. I mean, we, we, we've been going back and forth with that. Uh, it's such a knowledgeable book. I mean, I wrote the pizza Bible, and then you look at what they wrote, the science behind the pizza, the, the research they did on pizza. I mean, my knowledge is what I know and what I've done in 30 years. But the knowledge for them to go around and take the trips, even more trips than I wasn't able to go on, and bring it back to a laboratory yes. and test it, uh, in a scientific way, right. it's 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 the book uh, for a long, long, long time. I don't know if anybody is going to ever have a budget or to be able to do a book quite yeah, like this. It yeah. was four years of research. Yeah, yeah, the knowledge behind it, the, the science behind it. Yeah, I think a lot of people are going to read the book and maybe a little upset to maybe some of the things that you thought were right um, or wrong. And uh, I believe that it, it may just correct some people or piss yep. them off. Yep. But whatever it is, it's 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 pretty amazing. Okay. Finally, I have to finish with one thing. There was recent. I did a video about the 50 best pizza IT. Do you, are you familiar with that? Yes. And, and and it listed 50 great American pizzerias. <clears throat> yep. You came out number one. You yeah. Were thank the number you. Number one on that list, which is fantastic. Yeah. It was pretty big but, deal. But, but I know. Mark, Peppy's wasn't on the list, you're Pepe's probably going to say. not one New and England pizza. He's pissed off about it because, you know, him and we're both Peppy's fans. I like Peppy's more than Sally's. I love Sally's. I love Modern. Yeah, you know, I think they that list was very Italian-influenced, obviously. 
Um, one of those lists, um, so when you look at those lists, uh, they're looking at more Neapolitan, classic Italian yeah, style, I think so. maybe Roman. So right. I wouldn't take that list too much to heart. You know, lists, lists are lists. It's very subjective. We're, we're happy to, to be on that yeah. list because if you look at the, most of them are wood-fired kind of right. concepts that you right. see. It wasn't like they had all these coal fires and conveyor guys in there. Yeah. So it was definitely kind of its own kind of little list. But coming from Italy, I'll, I'll take it. Yeah, take it. Take <laughs> yeah. it. All I'll right, Tony, yeah. thank you very yeah. much for your time. It's always thank a pleasure you. talking to you. I appreciate it. Go out and buy the Pizza Bible from Tony. Pizza Bible, yeah. You Check out perfectingpizza.com, you know. <laughs> yeah, Siler Chapman, Nick Bogatz, Michael Shepard and I, um, along with uh, Scott Anthony came together. Perfectingpizza.com, but the new app was launched. Uh, it's a food app. So, um, yeah, some big players are looking at it right now. We're excited uh, because it uh, it's, it's going to be pretty big. So, okay. yeah, this show is good for perfectingpizza.com. Perfect.